Today we are going to have a day of stand-up paddle boarding and wine drinking, but not at the same time. This morning on New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year, day 260, we went to paddleboard in Napier Harbour. It was a morning filled of uneven balance and of seagull. And join us now for the continuation of today's adventures. We are hitting the road to our next destination of our itinerary today, which is the Church Road Winery. We're going to be doing a behind the scenes winery tour, as well as loads of delicious tastings. That's how proper tour should start. Here's a glass. Let's fill it up. <laughs> yeah. With a glass in hand, we are following our tour guide outside so she can start giving us some of the history behind the Church Road Winery. And one of the really cool things about this winery is that it is the oldest commercial winery in New Zealand, making Hawke's Bay the region which is the oldest wine region in New Zealand as well. Our guide goes through some of the initial stages of the winemaking process, including separating grapes and unwanted objects. And then she is opening the doors to where the magic happens. This is where the wine starts its fermentation process. But most importantly, this is where we're going to start doing some of our wine tasting straight from the vats during different stages of the fermentation process. We'll crush the red grapes um, and put the skins and the juice into these tanks. Then we'll add the yeast and the yeast starts to convert sugar into alcohol with CO2 being given off. Those massive wooden stuff that we are looking at right now are French oak vats. They were actually the first winery in New Zealand to use wooden vats and this is what gives this really oaky taste to the wine. Moving on to the outside section of the winery, we get to taste wine in every single stages of the process. It's really cool to taste the difference and all the difference that makes each step of the process in the wine. We start with the first taster, which is basically just grape juice. And as we go, there is a little bit more alcohol that can be tasted in it. It's quite fascinating. During our tour, our guide is also telling us more about the terroir of the Church Road Winery. It's actually one of the 72 different wineries in the Hawke's Bay region. That seems like a lot, but Church Road stands above the rest because it is one of the earliest wineries and they established the wine region as a wine region. And tour-wise, one of the unique aspects of Church Board Winery is that they have a mini museum. It's a really awesome place where we get to learn so much more about the Hawke's Bay region as well as the winemaking process at Church Board Winery. This wine museum is set within huge concrete vats that used to store wine and you can actually see some of the crystals that have been formed from the wine producing tartaric acid. But today it stores winemaking tools and early winemaking equipment which dates back to 3,000 years. There's also a few scenes set up from the early winemaking days. It's a great place to learn more about the winemaking history in Hawke's Bay and for instance it was the first place in New Zealand to produce Bordeaux style red wine because of the similar climate to Bordeaux in France. Along the tour, as we're learning more about the history of the wine region as well as the culture of wine in New Zealand, we're learning that the Hawke's Bay region is actually the largest red wine producer in the whole country. In fact, it produces 88% of the red grapes of New Zealand. That's all your Merlot, Cabernet, Sauvignon, Syrah, all of that comes from Hawke's Bay. I really like how in-depth this tour goes. Throughout the one hour and a half that we spend with our guide, we learn so much about the wine culture in New Zealand, as well as even meeting a few people through pictures, obviously, that started the Churchill Winery back in the days. It's really awesome. And the last section of our tour is actually taking us through a massive room full of French old barrel, which are keeping some of the best wines that are made right here in Church Road. It's a really awesome way to finish the tour, as we are now making our way to the banquet table that has been set for us. Here we're going to be learning about wine pairing, how to put wine with different food and actually get some awesome taste out of it. And it's really surprising how selected wine change completely the taste of selected ingredients. Are you enjoying it, Robert? Well, honestly, the olives actually taste very different after the wine. That is, that is actually a strike difference, strong difference. 
But obviously we're here for the wine, wine and even more delicious wine. You don't like Renault? I don't like Philips at all. But I have to be honest, after the wine, because I don't like red wine, the olive tastes better. Mm. Is there anything you do like? <laughs> I like everything except olives. Chicken nuggets and chips, is that what you order? <laughs> yeah. Of a kid's menu? <laughs> wow.